Hello everyone and thanks for joining us here on News West 9. I'm Sydney Jolivet and even though we're still ways away from the November elections, the Odessa mayoral race is one of the most talked about positions that Odessans will be heading to the polls for. And joining me here today is Mayor Javier Hoven. He is seeking re-election this year. Thank you so much for joining us, Thank Mayor. Thank you for having me here, Sydney. So we have a couple of questions for you today. Absolutely. So you are running for re-election yes. and what would you say motivated you to run again? What motivates me is something that one of my mentors, the late Jimmy Ward, who owned Cashway, uh, inspired me when I was uh, eight, nine years old. He said that I'm part of a team, and I'm an integral part of the team. Everyone on those teams are integral, whether you're on the bench, with starting, not starting, regardless of where you are in the field, you're an integral part. And in the seasons, there is the first part and the second part. When I ran in 1995, I used those principles. In 2020, as mayor and elected, I see this as two seasons. First season being four years, and the second season being the next four years. And that's what motivates me. I want to be able to finish the season. And so what do you believe a city mayor must have? A, city, a, a mayor, a, a really the person, needs to take heed that not only you're in charge, but keep in mind the people that are in your charge. And a leader, a good leader, surrounds himself with people, knowledgeable people. Everybody makes connections to the right schools, the right money, the right culture, the right social economics, things of that nature. But in reality, we surround yourself with knowledgeable people, motivated people. But in the end, you have to make those decisions. It's up to the mayor, the CEO of the corporation to make those decisions. Whether they're big or small, critical, non-critical, it all falls on the CEO. And that's the role in which I play in. And what I keep in mind, in the foremost, is when its credit is to be given, you give it to others. When it's time to take the responsibility, you, you take the full responsibility. And that is what has always kept me going, and that's is something that I keep uh, every day within my job description, but also is what I love about the job. And so that ties perfectly into our next question. What would you say transparency means to you in this role, and how would you be sure to implement that when you're, if you're reelected? Well, transparency is what we initiated, and what I mean by this is com constantly communicate to the citizens of what's ongoing in the, in the city whether it's good news, whether it's news, it, you know, those difficult talks. And so one of the things that we implemented was a new communications department where we're constantly talking to the, uh, to the citizens in the form of uh, what is happening, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's emergencies, whether it's road closures, whether it's trash pickup, and also the things that uh, we're coming up short when we're not having enough vehicles or enough employees to be able to go out and pick up all the the, the uh, going from a two-day service to one-day service and, and what, why, not just what, what's occurring and what are the operational challenges, but why and how we got here and how we're going to solve those. That's transparency and having that constant communication. People want to be in the know. They, want a, they wanted a direct communication from City Hall, from its elected officials, from the staff, to the citizens and not have someone in the middle. We're not you know, today, this last 10 years, the city of Odessa's transformed. The culture's transformed. The, the racial makeup has been transformed. And people are, there's technology out there that we need to bring Odessa into the 21st century, and we're utilizing those methods of communication. And that transparency sometimes can be difficult, but the thing is, it's necessary. People want to be aware, they want to know, and they want it to hear it and know it immediately. But also, you have to tell them what's going on, what are the issues, and how you're going to solve it. And those are the three uh, pillars that you always have to keep in mind. Absolutely. And so I believe that you are coming up on an opponent this year, so you won't be running uncontested. So what would you kind of say is your mindset going into the race? Do you think you'll kind of do your campaign any different or anything, things that you're keeping in mind? You know, I've been married for four or three years. To beautiful, lovely uh, wife, Joanne Hoven. Let me tell you the thing: life is not does not go uncontested. 
I'm, I'm running for re-election. I'm going to the citizens to basically say this is the job we've done. This is the plan we've had. I've been consistently since 1995 when I was first elected to city council at the age of 29. I was consistent then. I've been consistent now. And the defend and be able to talk about all the things that we've accomplished and, and, and it's ongoing and we've instituted. So I've always stick to uh, the game plan that I've had about being uh, transparent with the citizens, reducing the extracurricular activity that the city has over decades and decades have basically put money into and gotten away from the five core principles, which is police, uh, OFR, which is fire department, roads, water and sewer. And those are critical. And the thing is, you have to get to a point where you are financially sound to make those investments where you burn the citizens the least. Oftentimes, we've seen government at all three levels, whether it's the local, the state, or the federal, that the first thing that politicians will do or government entities is go out there and just ask for more money and raise the tax rate. That should be the last resort. And you should find resources out there to be able to address those five core principles, uh, basic services, and the last resort is debt. And we've been doing that in the last 18 months that we've truly been able to control the, the, the council and have a majority that is looking po uh, forward to pushing Odessa as a holistically and whole. Perfect, and so that perfectly ties into my next question. In 2022, you were really um, kind of talking about getting a head start on improvements on road and yes. water infrastructure. So can you really talk about the success that you've had over your term with those with those main things? And we did that interview with News West 9 there at City Hall when we laid out that plan to 22, 23, and 24. And first of all, what we needed to do is find where the city, uh, the city of Odessa and its finances were, kind of look into the into our uh, banking account and find out exactly what was the health. It's diagnosing the patient, doing a triage. Where's the money? What can we do? What do we have? What do we not have? What are, what are our debts? What's outstanding? And what are the different pools that we can go after and look at to be able to not burden the city uh, taxpayers with more taxes? That has, and we've gone through uh, with an audit and we've used internal mechanisms to do that and go through that and we're identifying those. Now what we've done is we have started just this last, this Monday of this week, we started the first project that is from uh, uh, Business 20, which is 2nd Street South, all the way down to Pull Road, which is uh, Crane, mm -hmm. Crane Avenue, one of the oldest uh, infrastructures that we have in the city. It's a complete remake from the roads to the infrastructure. We're gonna be seeing uh, construction on Business 20 from just r immediately west of West County Road down to Hancock Street. You've seen a little bit of it, that's TxDOT. And then the reconstruction of West County Road from three, three, uh, wait, uh, 302 down to 385. So, and then the Interstate 20 that's coming on. So we've already started and identified an additional $25 million from Pioneer where we've been selling our gray, uh, gray water. And we're gonna be able to utilize those monies to start uh, doing about $25 million worth of infrastructure along 42nd Lancaster and also address what's most critical that we've been dealing with and not a isolating when we have a break, 171 valves. Mm -hmm. And so we will be discussing that on Tuesday, July 16th at our retreat. We, why, why the 16th? Because at the same time we have to look at our budget, we have to look at the tax rate and identify those monies that we're going to be able to use that will not impact or minimize the impact to a huge extent where we're not seeing that lowering taxes go up. People are burned enough with inflation and everything that we're seeing at the, nation, uh, at the nation. It is up to local to be able to find that relief and find that re relief valve and that's what we're trying to do. So the work is definitely being done and really my next question, are there any other accomplishments that you kind of want to highlight since you've been in office? Yes, we've limited the, mo uh, the, 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 the growth of government uh, the bureaucracy, we've eliminated and uh, two, two positions. We're consolidating two more departments within the city from risk management and HR into one because they pr uh, primarily uh, wind up doing the same functions. Mm -hmm. So actually reducing the size of government is critical. The other thing is, is that we're growing um, our economic base through sales tax with uh, retail. We've talked this so many times as how we wind up Everybody always said about Odessa, you cannot in any form bring first-rate 
number one class type of retail. We got Bass Pro coming up. And because of that, we are now seeing pretty much a lot of great retailers that want to come and are visiting Odessa, uh, mostly on a monthly basis, scanning the locations, looking at available land, and there's a lot of land to be had. And I also, I was just told that we're gonna wind up moving dirt on our great 100 acre sports complex. Wow. And that should be starting here in August. It was good news, I got that right before I came on the interview. And so you're gonna start seeing movement. You're gonna start seeing movement on 191 for the Bass Pro Shop and, uh, and, and 150 acres there. And then you're gonna see 100 acres start moving, start building the infrastructure on the roads for the, uh, the sports, uh, sports complex that will be the sports complex and destination center for uh, the entire Permian Basin. That sounds like a... It's exciting. It's yeah, exciting for our kids because right news. now we're hosting the uh, uh, Permian Basin All-Stars where we have teams mm -hmm. from uh, Lubbock, San Angelo, Milan, and Odessa. Uh, hundreds of thousands of kids here for the weekend. And just imagine when we get back in rotation in three years, they'll be playing in our newly, newly named uh, sports complex that we're out there getting donations for them to be able to name. And in three years, they'll be playing on that sports complex. And then they'll go shop at Bass Pro? They'll be uh, shopping <laughs> Bass Pro, and they'll be shopping and going into our restaurants, and hopefully be my favorite uh, restaurant, which is uh, Cheesecake Factory. That's one of the, my requests that I wow. put in. Wow. Yes. I prefer Grand Lux. Have you there you go. It? Yeah. Awesome. And so if you were to be reelected, what other changes do you have planned for the city? What we move in Odessa into is the 21st century, modernize it. It's not that old, dusty old town that I grew up in, I was born in, and, and I reflect what Odessa looks like today. It is, we, we are diverse. We have people from around the world that's coming to Odessa and they're looking for jobs, opportunities, and to raise their families. I lived here when we wind up seeing the oil embargo and we saw uh, prices in, in, in gasoline and the gas lot lived here during the old bust, several of them, mm -hmm. and people were resilient, and people would come and go in waves. And what we saw when we saw the COVID and we didn't see people leave. We see fluctuations in the price of oil and gasoline, but we don't see people leave. People are coming here, whether it's from Mexico, Central, South America, or, uh, from Africa, from Europe, from the Middle East, they're all here. And what they're doing is they're staying, they're planting roots, they're looking for opportunities, they're going into the old field, they're making their money, and then they're diversifying by going into other type of industries, whether it's retail, restaurants, or any other type of uh, service industry. Mm -hmm. But they're staying, they're buying homes, they're raising their families, and they become the fabric, and they're, they're Odessans, they're our neighbors, we're going, we, ch we shop at the same grocery stores, we go to the same schools, we drive on the same roads. That's the new Odessa, that's the Odessa that uh, I've grown up in and has radically changed in the last 10 years. And, and, I'm, and I'm, I, let me tell you one thing, I'm encouraged by Odessa's future. Absolutely, and so um, there is something that you have been doing in the past. Are you looking to continue those, those town hall meet and greets and things like that? Every time that I meet someone, uh, where me and my wife are in the grocery store, I constantly meet with a group uh, at the Chick-fil-A, I go to several pair meetings. Every time there's an interaction, that's a town hall. Those are consistent, those are constant. I'm always doing them. I enjoy it and I love doing them. I love the campaign. I love talking to people. I love talking about Odessa. I love to be able to hear what's going on with their situation, whether it's trash, whether it's alleys, whether it's potholes and things of that nature. Those are simple. The thing is, is that trying to distribute those resources to go out there. I invite them, I, I'm encouraged by them, where the reason is those things can be immediate. And, uh, and so yes, we'll be continuing to do those on a constant basis. We've been doing it for the last four years and we'll continue to do those. Awesome, and so last year recycling services were actually cut due to the budget, so is that something that you're planning to bring back? They were never cut, and they were never cut with, for the budget. I think that was a mis misconception. What we wind up doing is that we had a semblance of what everybody believed to be recycling. And staff had recommended that it was, uh, it did not work. And without going into many details, we found actually a company that is on West, uh, West Hector County on Highway 866 that actually takes our recyclables. Because in the past, before we made those changes, our recyclables were being put into the landfill. They were not really being recycled. Mm -hmm. The only thing that was being extricated out of it was uh, cardboard and metal. And, that was, and those monies were not being returned to the residents. 
as it should be by contractual. Now what we wind up doing is we extract those metals, they stay within the department, within the city, and then everything else is uh, moved to, after it's collected at the uh, city site, and it's moved to a company on, in West Sector County, then it's separated, then it's packaged and the rest winds up being in the landfill that's there on site. So we truly now have a recycling facility, and basically what happens is we sort that out on site at the city site. So it makes it easier for transportation, it reduces cost and frequency of taking uh, all those uh, recyclables from the city site to the West Sector County location. So we're saving dollars in transportation, we're dedicating more of those, um, those trucks to be able to not go around the entire city and picking up and taking away services from residential and commercial. And that's another thing that we'll have to wind up doing is addressing the commercial pickup and also the apartments so we can be more focused on the residential. And that will be coming uh, as we continue to move forward in the next four years. And so speaking on those next four years, have you, what has the kind of community response been to you running again? Are you getting some early support or anything like that? They're, they're having your back, anything like that? When I was elected December 15th, 2020, on December 16th, people were asking me to run in again. So I have been running for the, this next re-election, the next four years, and that campaign started on December 16th of 2020. So yes, I've had support since day, uh, less than 24 hours after first being elected. That sounds good. And so are you kind of getting a head start? Have you started early? Are you already campaigning or things like that? been campaigning every single day since December 16th of 2020, and, uh, and, and that is one of the things that I really enjoy doing. And so um, how would people be able to kind of stay up to date with you and the things that you're doing in the community? They can go on to uh, on, uh, online and go vote Javier Joven. And, uh, at, uh, and then they can, uh, I'm sorry, uh, vote Javier Joven, uh, dot com. And they also can go on Facebook, uh, Hoven for Mayor, Javier Hoven for Mayor. And so those one of those things. They also, on, on, uh, online, it has my, uh, my number on it, it's 432. 238-7859 and they can contact me. Uh, I am my office. Where I'm at is my office. I don't have staff. I don't have handlers. It's just me. And so when you're talking and you're texting or you're emailing, the person that's responding is me. So there is no uh, go-between. You're, you're, you're getting direct access to. Awesome. And so we're just about wrapping up. Those are all of my questions for you. If there's anything that I might not have touched on that you'd like to highlight or just a closing thought. Closing thought is that, you know, Elections are contentious, and a lot of times you'll wind up seeing he said, she said, they did, they didn't do, and things of that nature, and, and I understand this. The thing is, is that the local is the most important of all the levels, which I call the, uh, there is the millions, billions, and the trillions program. The millions program is the city of Odessa for the reason is that municipalities and local deal in the million dollars of budget. Billions are state because they deal in billion dollar uh, budgets. And trillions is the federal government because they deal with trillions of dollars, if not more. But locals immediate. Locals here. We live within the same community. We rub shoulders to shoulders. Uh, I just gave you my personal phone number that you can contact me. You're never going to see that from the state rep, Senate, uh, or federal. And so the thing is, we're here. You know where I go to church. You know where I reside. And we have history together. And that's what's the beauty, and, and, we, and that probably is what we ignore the most is the municipality, our school boards, hospital boards, county, and that they're more critical because if we're going to continue to hold on to this republic that we call the United States, is that we're going to have to get out and vote in November, and we're going to have to be consistent, we're going to have to come out and fight for being able to keep the freedoms that we have. That's all about it. And I thank you for the interview. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us in studio today. And I do want to send out a friendly reminder that October 7th is the last day to come out and vote during this election year. And early voting will begin on October 21st. And if you want to catch more stories from us, be sure to visit us online at newswest9.com and our channel and streaming services on 9+. Plus. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.